Hi there. Today we're going to talk about floats and how to create columns on your web page. So I have this example page that I used in a prior video about how to work with the CSS box model and in that I created three boxes to, to work with. Okay, so if you take a look at my HTML code you will see that actually I can get rid of this main section because I don't really have anything in here you will see that I have three sections. The first one is called section ID first and within that I have a heading, an H2, and I have a paragraph tag. That's all I have in there. And then my second box is also section but with a different ID of second. Same thing, just an H2 and a paragraph. And then my third box is a section with ID third. Okay, so again, they just have H2s and Ps in them. If you take a look at my CSS code, you will see we're using IDs, so we use the pound sign for ID number, my little trick there. And within each box, I use a little bit different style to kind of work with those different boxes. So what I want to do first is I want to make this page have two columns. So I want the first column on the left to be margins, and the second column sitting right next to it to be border and then I want this padding to be underneath it. So that's what we're going to do first. Now uh, working with floats um, you need to have two different properties in CSS in order to do this correctly. The first one is you need to use the word float. So again I've got my my ID first here so I'm going to work with this margins box. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put float and then I need to pass it a direction. So I'm going to float this to the left. Okay that means it's going to the box is going to move as far left on the page as it can. Now I've applied float left and you'll notice that nothing has happened yet. That's because we're missing the one other very important part. For this to work we have to include a width. And it gets a little tricky working with widths because you might need to do a little math here. So in my example I don't really have anything other than a little bit of padding here. Let's take a look. I have a padding of 1%. So that means I have 1% on the top, 1% on the right, 1% on the bottom, and 1% on the left. So I have some padding and then let's just double check it. I don't have anything in the body. So I believe all I have here is 1%. So I want the width of this to say, let's say we make it be 40%. Okay, so now you'll see what has happened here is I have my box. It's taking up 40%. You can see it's not quite halfway, but what's happened is the other boxes have tried to move up into the space that's sitting to the right. Because what we've basically done is we've taken this and we've said, okay, you know, we're going to we're going to make this box smaller so it doesn't take up the whole page and that means all the other content is going to try and come right up next to it. So don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't get frustrated because we're not done yet. So we're going to do the same thing to the second. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to float and let's take a look. We can float this to the right. Let's see what happens. We float to the right. Now we're it's going to take up 100% again until we put our width in here. And our first one we used at 40%, so let's just do a couple things here. All right, so we're going to put this one 40% too. Now, a couple things you'll notice here. This has moved over to the right, but now we have this padding trying to come up in between the space between these. Okay, so this really isn't working for me. So what you have to make sure to do when you float content and you have two columns or more, the, the piece that comes underneath it needs to have a clear. So in this example, we're using the third ID. What we need to do is we need to put clear and you could either clear left or clear right, but most often you're going to clear both. So look at what has happened now. When we put that clear in, it's going to move down so that it knows it's going to start on a new space. 
Okay, now this isn't exactly perfect yet. We don't have it exactly the way we want it to be, but here are our two columns. So a few things to, to take notice of. Number one, when your box is created, your box generally doesn't have a height applied to it. We put things with a width so that the content can grow and expand depending on the width of the screen, but we're not so concerned about the height of the screen because as you know on your mobile device you could, you might be scrolling you know for a while to read that whole page. So we don't necessarily want to put in a height on here, but you'll notice that the content takes up the amount of space based on the size of the content. So in this case the the box on border d clearly doesn't have as big of a padding and it doesn't the paragraph is only what seven lines whereas this is closer to 10. So if these had the same exact paragraphs in them they would be and the same exact padding margin etc they would be the same size but since they're different it's not going to to work as well. But we can play around with things. So number one, we've got 40% on both of these. So let's see what happens if I maybe take this to 45%. So I take this to 45%, you'll see that the content has has expanded with both of these, which is good. And maybe I want to kind of make this work a little bit better for me. Maybe in my first section, see what I have here. I have a padding of 1%. Maybe I want to put margin left here on this first section. So again, try and keep everything to percentages. So let's say if I do 3%, okay, that has pushed me over quite, quite far. But let's do if I see if I can do the same thing to this one, because we want things to kind of look the same. We don't want it to be margin left, we want it to be margin right. So we're trying to kind of push these into each other a little bit. So that looks that looks pretty good. Now if you don't want there to be like this, if you don't want these boxes to be butting up right next to each other, we can work with that. So let's go to our first section and add a margin bottom of 3%. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that has kind of given us more breathing room, but that looks kind of weird now with so much margin down there and it's flush across the top. So we probably want to do the same thing. And I'm getting a little crazy with my margin tabs. Uh, let me do 2% up there. So again, that just applies to this one. If I want this one to follow the same thing, I need to put that in here as well. So margin top 2%. So that looks a little bit better. So you can kind of move things around with the box model. Okay and then just know that as since we're using percentages here your content will grow and shrink depending on what you have. Oh, that's the width of your content. Okay so this is a good, this is why we like to use percentages to do fluid uh, CSS, fluid design. Okay, next one is I want to turn this into three columns. So we're going to do the same exact thing here. Instead of having a clear both on the footer, when we take a look at my code, you'll see here's the third box and underneath it is the footer. So I'm going to move the clear both. Oh, I actually have a clear both already in there in my footer. So I'm going to remove the clear both from the third one and I'm going to do float. Now I need to know where am I going to put this? Right now I have the purple one floated to the right, the blue one floated to the left. So if I want the purple one to be in the middle, I'm going to change the second one to float left. So now it'll be pushed up against the blue one. And then I'm going to take the third one and float it to the right. And again, nothing's happening because I've missed my width. Okay, now let's see what happens. If I put in 45%, you will get a mess. Okay, because again, math. So we've got 45% with the blue, 45% with the purple, 45% with the green. That adds up way more than 100% and that doesn't even take into consideration our margins and padding that we have in these. So 
you you want to go smaller so we got three boxes 100 divided by 3 is 33.3 percent right so but we have our margins in there too of a percent and remember you've got to take into consideration if you have right and left so let's try 30 percent on all of these and see if they will all fit on the same line so let's see we might need to go a little smaller than that so there's the first one here's the second one and if they all fit on the same line you'll know that you've you've done okay this isn't fitting on the same line see it's still you'll see that this one is now trying to get into the space that is right underneath the border so I can go a little bit smaller again I want all these columns to be similar size so let's say I go to 28 percent oh see as soon as I went to 28 percent my padding came up so I can let's let's stick with 28 percent because I'm probably going to want to do a little bit of spacing in between these as well so 28 percent 28 percent 28 percent okay this looks good but now I've got to fix my margins okay so I've got a margin remember on the second one a margin right of three percent but since now I'm pushing it to the blue I want the margin to be on this side to give a little bit of spacing so there margin left of three percent this looks good now I just need to do the same thing for my third section because I don't have any margin on here and do margin I want this to be on the right side so and again we did three percent okay so they still all fit nicely that's good but oops I still need to do my margin top over here on the on the third section so let's go ahead and put margin top of what was it two percent two percent there oops two percent oh, why didn't that work hold on because I didn't write margin top okay margin top two percent that's because I had a typo okay so that looks a little bit better here we've got our three boxes and again please note that my boxes are all kind of strange looking um, if you're going to do this you probably want your boxes to have a similar style of design I've got some crazy paddings in here from my leftover thing and then I've got my footer here at the bottom of the page so this is my three columns as I make the box smaller you'll see what's happened is this has has gotten it's kind of broke my design there so let me see if I can go just a little bit smaller here see if that will fix that problem a little bit so if I go down to 27 percent and yeah it works it works a little better it's still gonna break at some point and it's gonna move to to the bottom so once it breaks then what we really want to do at this point is we want to start looking at responsive design but this lesson here was just to teach you how to do the floats and the clear and how to make extra columns and I would say normally when you design you probably don't want to do three columns too often unless you're designing for like uh, desktop screens as your primary source uh, a lot of times now with mobile design being the the first consideration here mobile first design uh, we just use one one single column and we kind of develop from there um, most of our web pages now are one one single column with cards or little boxes in between which kind of follow the system but as we get more advanced into page layout you will have more experience working with that okay thanks bye